Okay, I am standing here at the site of Camp Letterman. Um, and Camp Letterman uh, got its beginnings on July 5th, 1863. So it was just 150 years ago uh, that Camp Letterman got its beginnings. And that is when Assistant Adjutant General Seth Williams issued orders to establish a general hospital or a tent hospital here at Gettysburg. Now, at the Battle of Gettysburg, there was 53,000 casualties. Um, after the Army of Northern Virginia retreated, uh, and the Union Army picked up and fled after them, there were approximately 30,000 wounded that were left here on the fields. Um, and of course, in town, uh, local farm, uh, farms, houses, barns, hospitals, uh, different buildings and churches became temporary, immediate field hospitals. Um, and of course, as the days went on, those hospitals became overcrowded and were unable to care for the wounded. Seeing this in advance, Seth Williams issued orders to establish a general hospital, an outdoor hospital here on this site. Now, the site we're standing on um, was the old George Wolf Farm. And the George Wolf Farm sat on this hill here. Um, the farm sat close to the York Road here. Um, and just to the right over here behind what is McDonald's today sat a railroad depot and of course the York Pike which still runs by here today in front of the McDonald's. Um, that made it easy to move soldiers in or out of this hospital when needed. Now the camp was named after Jonathan Letterman and Jonathan Letterman um, was the developer of what we know as the triage hospital or he had a system of first aid stations off of the battlefield uh, that would assist in transporting wounded right from the battlefield into these uh, uh, triage hospitals. Um, and it was a lot of his system that was used to establish Camp Letterman, which was named after Jonathan Letterman. Um, now, as I said earlier, this was the uh, immediate site of the hospital, which we see this empty area in front of us and then just over here to the right where you see the Hilton Garden Inn um, and the shopping center, the giant shopping center, the, the camp filtered into that area as well. Now in 1863 there was a road just to the my immediate left here before that billboard that went all the way back beyond that little tower back there and to the fence and the tree line that you see in the distance. And that was the original 1863 entrance road to the camp. Now before 1863, before the Battle of Gettysburg, that road went back further to farms and connected to the original Bonnie Town Carlisle Turnpike. The Bonnie da Town Carlisle Turnpike I did uh, in my secrets of the videos on the Daniel Lady Farm. You'll want to go back and watch that video. But that road, which went dated back to the 1740s, stretched from what is now Bonneville, which used to be called Bonnet Town, back toward the Daniel Lady Farm property, and then shot up this way, came through right here to the York Pike, and then went just behind this CNR Auto Fleet and the McDonald's this way and connected uh, to the Carlisle Turnpike. And remnants of the Carlisle Turnpike today are part of the Hunterstown Roads, which goes this way. So this road actually came in and connected and then originally went out to the old Harrisburg Road, which took them then up to Carlisle. So the 1863 entrance road to Camp Letterman, which sat here, was actually a portion of the old 1740s road, the Bonnetown Carlisle Turnpike. This has been part one of Camp Letterman on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Part two of Camp Letterman, and we're starting here at the Hilton Garden Inn, and we're actually looking at the east side of the building. And when you turn 180 degrees, you go back into the Camp Letterman site. Uh, the d area that we're, is, that we're in directly in front of us, right here, from about this view, right on up to here, to where the hill line is here in the distance. Um, at the time in 1863, this was covered by woods. Um, and this area was where the Cook 
tent was. Now, the reason the cook tent was here, and one of the reasons that Camp Letterman was chosen was because of its natural springs. Um, it had several natural springs, and still does to this day, that flow water out of this area here. Um, and they built a permanent cookhouse uh, on the site of Camp Letterman. It was a wood structured building, and this provided um, fresh water coming from the springs out of the ground for the soldiers, as well as the cookhouse with many basins where they could cook up uh, different types of stews and soups and uh, uh, coffee, uh, fresh coffee, um, for these wounded Union and Confederate soldiers. Uh, that, along with the site actually being on a hill, provide great drainage of waste products, waste water, um, and later on, as we're going to see when we get to the other part of Camp Letterman, uh, foul smells were also, because of the winds, directed away from the camp. But this area of the camp here was, is, the, is the cook tent area of the camp, and one status a structure over here um, where they would cook all the food and provide the water for these wounded soldiers. This has been part two of the George Wolf Farm, also known as Camp Letterman, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. I am now standing on the west side of the Hilton Garden Inn, and as I pan around, you're going to see a dumpster here. And ironically enough, the area from this dumpster um, over toward this area of the giant shopping center fuel station um, in 1863 here from July um, for the next 121 days until November um, stood the trash burn pits. Now, of course, with a camp of this size and magnitude where you have anywhere between 800 uh, 18, 800 and 1,800 soldiers going through at any one time and treating over 3,000 during the uh, few month period that existed, you uh, came up with a lot of rubbish, you know, waste products and different types of trash. Um, and those, those, those trash uh, and that rubbish was all brought into this area here between that dumpster that's behind that bush and this gas station, and they were brought in here and they were burned into in these in pits that were dug in the ground. Um, ironically enough, today there's a dumpster near the site of the trash uh, burn pits, and even more ironically, a gas station. <laughs> so, um, just a little bit of uh, added history to our, our site here. Uh, this area here, where the giant fuel station to the dumpster here was the site of the trash burn pits of Camp Letterman in 1863. This has been part three of Camp Letterman, the George Wolf Farm, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. ...of our series on Camp Letterman, and directly in front of us are a couple benches with wayside markers. Um, that we're going to go over and look at a minute. We're going to see a quote by a local civilian named Sally Myers and then also an account of a, a letter that was written here from a man in the 17th Connecticut Volunteers. Um, but um, there were several panoramic views of Camp Letterman that were taken from about where the third telephone pole is back here. Um, back in 1863, uh, in this direction, and in this direction, and later I'll post them, in this direction, the panoramic views went from left to right, from about where that Hallmark store is over there, straight on out to about right here where these wayside markers are. And the five photographs that were taken, if you line them up, show a scene depicting where our camera is now. And also at the time, since there was a lot less trees, you could actually see the town uh, in the distance. And later on, we're going to try to get a panoramic view of the surrounding town from this hill uh, here on the George Wolf Farm. But let's take a walk over to the wayside markers, and I want to read from them to kind of give you an idea uh, of where we're standing and what was happening here on this ground. Now, on this ground in 1863, uh, from just between this first and second telephone pole uh, to about where that silver car is over there in the distance uh, right here 
was the general hospital wards. There were six rows of tents between those. The, and in a minute, I'm going to show you where the fourth row was. But let's take a walk over here to these wayside markers here. And we're going to look at them both and read them both. Um, the first one is entitled, The Sight of Blood Never Affected Me Again. And it says, With the departure of the two armies following the battle, the bur burden of caring for the wounded fell largely on the shoulders of the local civilians. Although much attention has been paid to the United States Sanitary Commission and the Christian Commission, little notice has been given to the area citizens whose houses and barns were used as field hospitals. Sally Myers, a young woman of 21 in 1863, was one of many local residents who nursed the wounded at camp. Letterman, and in later years she recalled, the sight of blood never again affected me, and I was among the wounded and dying men day and night. While the battle lasted and the town was in possession of the rebels, I went back and forth between my home and the hospitals without fear. The soldiers called me brave, but I am afraid the truth was that if I did not know enough to be afraid, and if I had known enough, I had no time to think of the risk I ran, for my heart and my hands were full. I shall always be thankful that I permitted to minister to the wants and soothe the last hours of some of the brave men who lie suffering and dying for the dear old flag. And in this wayside marker is uh, view four of the five view panorama. And if you look in the marker, you're going to see this tent here that I'm pointing at. This was the last tent in row four. And that tent, actually, the spot it was located today is just left of this marker. There's a handicapped parking spot right here. And if we look at this handicapped parking spot and we go over here and stand on it, this was where that tent at the end of row four sat in 1863. So this was the end of the row. Now these these tents uh, were in were in six rows and between each row of tents um, there there were 17 tents per row leading in that direction. Okay so you had row four, five, six and then you had three two and one, two and one being beyond the trees there. Um, the tents themselves were 15 feet wide and 14 feet deep. Um, sometimes they would put two tents together, making them 15 feet wide and 28 feet deep. Um, there were 10 feet between each row, and the tents were also lined, as you can see in the photograph, they had cedar on them. And the cedar would not only repel bugs, but it would also get rid of some of the bad odor that was in the camp from different wounds and blood. And if you look at the pictures here, you'll see how they lined them uh, outside with cedar. And I would imagine they would put some cedar on the inside as well for the smell. Now let's turn around and look at the other wayside marker. Um, this wayside marker is entitled, His Recovery is Considered Doubtful. Among the hundreds of soldiers, nurses, and volunteers who worked at Camp Letterman was Private Justice Silman of the 17th Connecticut Volunteers, a resident of New Canaan, slightly wounded in the fighting on July 1st. He remained behind to care for the more critically wounded comrade of his, Samuel Comstock. Writing to his mother on August the 11th, 1863, Silman noted that Sam is getting on as usual. His recovery, I believe, is considered doubtful. He is very thin but it's quite strong for as one who has suffered so much. I think appearances are favorable at present. Six weeks later, Private Solman wrote another letter on September the 26th, 1863, saying, I have just returned from visiting Sam. He is failing rapidly and is liable to drop away at any moment. He seemed uh, disinclined to talk and wished to sleep. I have made arrangements so that I can have him embalmed, and the cost of embalming will be $15.00. <clears throat> and five dollars uh, for the box and twenty four dollars for postage. Now Sam died on September the 27th and Private Silliman accompanied the body of his friend back to New Canaan. Ironically just a few weeks before Silliman observed that Gettysburg had been extensive coffin mart in Bombers Harvest Field um, who, in which these guys made an enormous profit. And you also want to go back and watch 
two videos I've done that connects this story. One of them is on the 17th Connecticut at Gettysburg and their monument. And the other one is a series I did on the arrival of the 11th Corps at Gettysburg, which you can actually trace the route that Justice Silliman um, uh, and his friend, Sam Comstock, took on their way to get to Gettysburg just before he was mortally wounded. Um, so this wayside marker here is a story of one of the soldiers who st stayed here in this area with his friend um, and was with him for his last days on earth. Uh, and this spot again uh, at the way is at the waysides. It's between the Hilton Garden and Hotel here. Uh, and then the left side of the giant shopping center, which you see the Papa John's pizza and the holiday hair. This has been part four of Camp Letterman on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Shopping center here. And we're going to do part five of Camp Letterman. Um, and just in this little clearing here in a moment, you're going to see the back of the giant shopping center, the Papa John's store. And you're going to see a dumpster, then to its right a car, and then to its right... Uh, a little grassy area with an electric box. And where that box sits today was actually the site of the operating tents here at Camp Letterman. Um, and the operating tents at Camp Letterman were like today if you were to receive a gunshot wound and you would have to go to the hospital, you would go into the uh, emergency operating rooms. You wouldn't go into the general population or the hospital or be placed in a waiting room. You would actually be in an operating tent. And these were the most severe cases of the soldiers uh, who, were, who were wounded in battle and then taken here to the site. They were put into the operating tents. Um, now from our first couple videos that we shot, to give you an idea where we're at, the first one we shot was out here on the York Road. Uh, the second one was where that large tree is. Uh, sits right over here over the corner of the building here in the distance. The third one which was the trash burn pits were beyond the building in this direction. And then the fourth side was on the wayside directly in front of the stores over here. Um, but this is the site of the operating tents that sat here at Camp Letterman where the severe cases the men were uh, operated on, uh, limbs being amputated and, and bullets being extracted and, and so forth. Um, so this has been Camp Letterman Part 5 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook.